Can you see me? Can you see my slide? Okay, then let's start. Uh, so again, thank, uh, like uh, welcome uh, to my office here. So uh, unfortunately, like we cannot uh, meet each other uh, in in person, but hopefully, uh, like it will be possible to present at least this way. And what I want to talk about is the history of online and mobile, uh, as I've uh, remembered that. Unfortunately, I didn't remember everything. Uh, I'm afraid. Uh, so like if you uh, if you can think of uh, some milestones that are not listed here, uh, please just uh, share it uh, share it uh, here as well because like lots of people contributed here. Lots of companies actually co-founded this and uh, uh, and it would be pity not to mention them. So if I can see how to get to the next slide. Oh, how comes I cannot go to the next slide? <laughs> what happened? So I'm afraid like we are going to be without the presentation. Are you using LibreOffice to present it or from a PDF? I'm using the LibreOffice. But if you export the PDF and use some PDF viewer to show it. Well, well. For the design mode. Like I'm even touching the next button on the presentation and it's just, just not showing. So let's just at least I am going to export as PDF and show the PDF oh. instead because it's fast. Like it all worked like the like a charm yesterday. <laughs> okay. And we can see typing your password. My password? I haven't typed my password. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure? I'm sure. Much better. It was, not, it was not the password, it was LibreOffice. So uh, I think now it kind of works. Yes. So uh, terribly sorry for this five minutes. And uh, so it actually, the, the online and mobile, um, like trying to, well, trying to, to get the, the, the tons of code that, that is in LibreOffice and previously was it OpenOffice and StarOffice uh, to something like a mobile uh, platform and uh, online uh, started all with a mobile app. Uh, so, so originally, uh, like it was uh, some kind of uh, like research project uh, back in the Suze days, uh, where the, uh, where Tor and Michael uh, started uh, cross compiling to to Android, and it was not only like cross compiling to Android, like we were trying to cross compile to uh, to other things uh, as well. Uh, so most notably Windows, because at the time, uh, like the build times on Windows were just terrible and. And so, like we were trying to use min, min w, uh, 
uh, for for things uh, to to, to uh, like uh, make it faster. And part of that was like, yeah, well, when, when we are cross compiling, like, what why not to try uh, Android as well? Uh, like, there were lots of limitations at the time. So the linker um, in in Android, uh, like had a limited number of uh, of uh, libraries that it could handle like it was some something like 96 so it was necessary to shrink the app and actually like make it uh, make it fit uh, the limit so lots of things had to be uh, like statically linked all together lots of work there uh, of course like there were some uh, like third party libraries like font config uh, we were like uh, um, somehow using the assets uh, for the con, uh, fonts or you know some some hex on top of that so that uh, so that like uh, uh, files can be uh, can be uh, shared by Android as, as assets and uh, can be somehow loaded from the assets. Uh, all this merge lib, Matush Kukain spent a lot of time uh, like um, taking the components into some bits that can be uh, like statically linked inside and, and run from the code uh, first loader. Debugging was a, to a total nightmare. Uh, like you had to start the app, wait, like put a sleep inside, then connect your GDB uh, somehow to the Android device or to the emulator, uh, and then hope that like it attached and then like from the command, uh, command line interface, like you were able to debug something. And yeah, Lots, lots of, lots of uh, uh, things there, uh, but uh, it resulted in the first uh, first version uh, of uh, of LibreOffice actually on the on the Android. Uh, so it was not usable for real work, but uh, you could see something that uh, that uh, like uh, still exists. Some things uh, very similar still exist as an app in the in the Android, uh, the Sender Open Office or how is it called? Uh, looks like this actually. Uh, so like the, the full UI, but like for us, it was not enough. Like we wanted to go further. Uh, so, uh, so in the following years, uh, the approach uh, like changed from this like entire UI visible uh, in the in the app uh, into uh, something uh, that was like rendering the whole pages. So for a viewer, uh, this was a great step ahead uh, because like now the UI could be uh, somehow like uh, uh, Androidy, but uh, but the content inside were just you know one page fully fully rendered. Uh, so like when you try to zoom inside or anything like that, it didn't work real well because like you would have to re-render uh, re the the entire page in in some much bigger resolution, which would take a lot of resources and a lot of time. Uh, so it was not good. Of course, scrolling the 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 entire document, uh, it was not possible not possible either. Uh, so uh, we were thinking like how to get it further and the answer was path rendering. So it was uh, not only uh, that we would be the only ones thinking that the path rendering is the right approach to this. Uh, so it started in 2013, just after like uh, VS uh, Collaborative Productivity were spun off uh, by Suze. And uh, we were lucky enough uh, that we have got a client called Cloudon who needed a mobile app on, on iOS. Uh, because so far, like they had a lot of installation of their existing app, uh, but their existing app was something, uh, something very weird. Uh, so like they had, uh, uh, they had uh, lots of virtual machines that were running, uh, running Microsoft Office inside, and they were kind of streaming um, like what was happening uh, behind the scenes on the server uh, down to the uh, iPhones and iPads. Uh, so like you can think like how it could uh, ever perform, but like it actually performed because the the uh, the video was uh, was uh, like uh, compressed quite well. And you know when just there was some cursor blinking or something like that, the video was uh, was uh, hem handling that just uh, just uh, just okay. Uh, but uh, like they wanted to switch away from this approach uh, to the app and instead uh, like build a native iOS app and we were helping with them with that. 
and they wanted uh, to have the tile rendering because uh, because they thought that was the, the right thing to do. Uh, also, like uh, uh, it was visible that uh, that like PDF viewers at that time used the tile rendering as well. And like uh, in the in some of the PDF viewers at the time, you could see that uh, that they were rendering the tiles. Um, and uh, like the iOS even had a convenient widget for that. Uh, so like you could uh, you could um, um, like uh, have a widget over your entire screen that was asking for the tiles for different resolutions, and it would even like support the the transition from one layer uh, zoomed to 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 another layer and stuff like that. Uh, just to remind, like what is the tile rendering for those like uh, who do not know? Uh, so it is technique uh, that is uh, that we are uh, using uh, in the code. Uh, for like displaying the content of the document. Uh, so basically like what you are seeing on the screen is not uh, is not uh, like uh, the font uh, as you would imagine that. So like uh, character by character, but you see it as small images like 256 to 256 uh, uh, pixels uh, that are like one uh, next to next to other. Uh, so it is actually like, uh, uh, like uh, a picture, what you are seeing con that is consisting from small pictures, and that is uh, like what is being updated when you type. Uh, so in this 2013, uh, this uh, LibreOffice kit was started uh, as a thin uh, C and C++ API to access the internals of LibreOffice core, uh, because we thought the uh, uh, the you know API was like uh, not. Uh, not uh, serving the purpose that that we needed for it was not performing well so we needed something that was like much tighter um, uh, into the code uh, and uh, like where we would be able to uh, to directly like instruct the, the core of uh, of libreoffice to do the things uh, that uh, that we needed for the tile rendering and later for the for the editing uh, so the callbacks uh, of the events uh, that come from the call uh, are uh, that can be triggered by the timers or uh, or the users' actions, uh, like uh, basically like uh, sent back uh, through the through the LibreOffice kit as well. And uh, uh, so the continuing here in 2014 and 2014 uh, was uh, like uh, further uh, for the use of the uh, LibreOffice kit for rendering. Uh, so the uh, it was uh, introduced into the Android app, uh, thanks to Smooth, uh, who helped uh, co-funding this. At that time, we used uh, compositing code from Mozilla, uh, because uh, as I said, like on iOS, uh, there was a widget uh, that was able to handle the, the tile rendering, but, uh, uh, but uh, uh, it, was, uh, it was nothing like that uh, on Android. So, uh, but Mozilla, uh, was uh, using uh, this in their Fennec project, uh, this tiled rendering as well. Uh, so we thought, look, well, yeah, sure, uh, let's uh, let's take it so that we do not have to reinvent the wheel. Uh, so uh, that was that. Uh, the Java the Java part uh, was was ported from that, and then editing was made possible later thanks to Miklos Vaina, and uh, uh, it was uh, it was uh, done under the, the TDF uh, tender. Uh, the the initial work to start uh, start the editing in the Android app. Uh, so you might be wondering, like, where the online final uh, uh, comes to the play, and it is exactly like here. So in the 2015, uh, finally we have found some co-funding uh, for the developing of online. Uh, so thanks to IceWarp, uh, we were we were able uh, to create a viewer and then uh, shared editing. So the viewer, um, that's obviously like what 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 does it do? So uh, so like uh, the user was able to open the document and see what is inside and scroll there and you know um, uh, zoom to things that uh, they wanted to see. Uh, but then uh, the next thing was uh, shared editing. Uh, so first, like one editor could edit, and then uh, even like it was possible that multi multiple uh, people uh, were able to see. Uh, the document, but only one of them was editing. And there was a button in the UI that uh, allowed the user to say, well, now 
uh, I want to take over the editing. So I'll be editing instead of the person that, uh, that is editing just now. And from that on, like uh, they switch to, to, to the other person editing and, uh, and uh, like the person was, was editing from the norm. And uh, of course uh, it was not enough. We wanted uh, the full collaborative editing. And uh, uh, that was something that we like totally feared of, like how we are going to do that, how we are going to provide like multiple cursors, uh, how we are going to, to provide multiple, uh, multiple selections and everything. And uh, uh, luckily we remembered and realized the multiple views feature in LibreOffice that I th I've never seen so far uh, used, anybody used on the desktop. Uh, like it is the next thing it, uh, it is the thing in you have in the window menu like next to the help uh, that uh, allows you to open like next view of the of the document so like you can see the document like twice and even have like uh, one selection in one uh, one of these documents and another selection uh, like in the uh, in the other view of the document uh, but like why one user would use that and suddenly like this happened to be the, the core of everything uh, for the collaborative editing. Uh, luckily, like this feature just, you know, works very well for a feature that I just cannot imagine anybody using on the on the desktop normally. And uh, and so like it provided the multiple cursors, the provided the multiple uh, multiple selections, and uh, it even provides the possibility to uh, to have uh, uh, to have like uh, several dialogues opened uh, at the same time, uh, which is which is awesome. Of course, like uh, whatever we uh, have to improve in the collaborative editing will now uh, like improve uh, even this feature. Uh, but luckily, like lots of things just just worked out of the box, and and it was more about the binding that into the online itself than uh, than like having to to develop it somehow extensively. Um, so for the online, of course, the server part was in C++. Uh, for the client side, like we didn't want to uh, write uh, everything from scratch. Uh, so we were searching for some project that would provide some path rendering. And uh, the best uh, at the time uh, seemed to be Leaflet, uh, which is a mapping software, um, so which, uh, which uses TAS as well. Uh, we had to hack it uh, very extensively. Uh, so maybe looking, looking backward uh, maybe it would have been better like if we invented stuff, something uh, on our own and develop it uh, on our own um, but at the time it looked like uh, the reusing is the, the right thing to do so that's that's what we did um, so then uh, in the uh, on the other hand in the mobile apps uh, in the android uh, like more features uh, were added to the toolbars and elsewhere uh, thanks to many uh, many people uh, and uh, uh, during this time, uh, on the other hand, in the online, um, the routing of dialogues uh, from LibreOffice was introduced. Uh, because until now, uh, like all of the things uh, that were uh, that that were uh, that needed some users' interaction uh, were uh, were done uh, uh, so that we had to re-implement re the stuff in JavaScript. Uh, so the various dialogues, uh, like the search dialog, had to be implemented. Uh, then, like uh, uh, dialog for uh, for um, uh, for uh, inserting tables uh, and and stuff like that. So so it had to be reinvented, uh, which uh, uh, seemed like not a good approach because uh, because uh, it was like increasingly hard. Like when we wanted to introduce all of the uh, all of the the paragraph or, or character properties, like it would be just too much work. Uh, so we came up of, uh, with the content, uh, concept of uh, routing the dialogues uh, directly from LibreOffice. So uh, we didn't use the tile rendering for the dialogues. Instead, like when they are, uh, when they are invalidated, uh, we just ask for the, the exact part of the dialogue that, uh, that was invalidated because it seemed as a an, as an overkill uh, for the dialogues to use the uh, use the the tile rendering because the the dialogues are just much smaller than the document itself uh, so like in the worst case like you can just send the entire dialogue like when you have the uh, when you have the the entire invalidate uh, 
lots of uh, corner case cases were fixed uh, because uh, uh, for example, like different users uh, can need the, the dialogues in different languages um, or even like it has to be possible that the, like two users actually open uh, the, the character dialogue at the same time. Um, due to that uh, and due to life cycle of the dialogues uh, in LibreOffice core, uh, like we had to change the dialogues uh, to be asynchronous. Uh, so like it is still possible to have the, the dialogues uh, because it was so that like when you uh, when you were very waiting for some uh, interaction of the users it was not the main loop main event loop that was uh, uh, that was uh, like waiting for the users actions but the the dialogue when it was executed uh, like it ran a different uh, a different event loop like some sub event loop and so uh, the outside uh, event loop like was able still to uh, to handle things like uh, re-rendering the document and uh, things like that uh, but uh, the problem was when two users actually opened the same dialogue uh, because at that time uh, like the dialogue was waiting until like when there was like one type of the dialogue for example the character properties and two users opened that at the same time like uh, until the user until any of these two users was able to continue typing, like both of them had to close the dialogue. Uh, so we had to do it so that uh, that actually the the main event loop is used uh, all the time, and uh, these dialogues are asynchronous and and just using this this main main event loop. Uh, so lots of the dialogues that be exposed in the online had to be like changed to this asynchronous approach. And uh, it turned out uh, at uh, in 2018 that just maintaining two, three, uh, sorry, three things uh, at the same time is just too uh, burdensome. Uh, so having this web version, having the iOS and Android distinct implementations of all these things is just uh, unbearable uh, anymore. So Jan Iversen uh, at the time uh, just started uh, prototyping and Tor. Uh, like took it over and took it to the next level uh, that uh, that uh, like the mobile app itself would actually consist of big web view and uh, we would be using the same online code uh, for the mobile as well and surprisingly the performance of this solution uh, was was very reasonable uh, so uh, so we went ahead and uh, and continued with that approach and uh, so the uh, so the online, uh, so the Android app uh, was actually uh, like changed to this approach as well in 2019 and uh, done the web view as well. So from that on again, like there was shared code uh, that like when, when the online was improved for the, for the mobile things, uh, it was possible to have it uh, in the apps as well. Uh, lots of uh, uh, lots of investment into that uh, was thanks to uh, thanks to Edwin Edfinis who who helped co-founding the the iOS iOS part of this which was which was awesome and uh, it was not uh, still not enough uh, like this uh, uh, like having this uh, disrupted dialogues uh, so we were considering what to do next and the next uh, was actually uh, like. Uh, just providing the information about the uh, about the look and behavior uh, of the uh, of the elements uh, that are happening in the LibreOffice core, and wrote them uh, to the mobile app and there render them, uh, them uh, via JavaScript. So actually, like when you can when you see here, like this is the mobile app. I will move myself somewhere else. So this is the mobile app and inside this, this is the sidebar. This is the sidebar that you know uh, from the, uh, from the LibreOffice, uh, but it is just uh, like provided the information, like what are the elements inside the sidebar and, uh, uh, and the actions like uh, that uh, should be called back. Uh, and uh, like most of them are, you know, commands, but of course further for some, some additional elements in there, uh, we needed some, some additional tricks. And uh, so the additional trick uh, was reusing the UI test API. 
So uh, you may remember uh, uh, the uh, Marcus Morhart's uh, uh, UI test uh, uh, framework uh, that is uh, like uh, used for the uh, for the testing of the UI in LibreOffice uh, while uh, while the building in on in Jenkins and the CI. Uh, so basically, we are using the same thing because uh, like that way allows us uh, to nicely uh, like. Um, hook into the uh, into the dialogues and see uh, like which elements are in there and uh, and uh, uh, change them in the way uh, that is needed and also like get the call uh, callbacks uh, from that like when there's a, uh, an action happening in the dialogue uh, like uh, see it on the online side and re-render the JavaScript accordingly which uh, was then base, uh, base for the further work uh, on the notebook bar. So now in the online, uh, you can see a beautiful notebook bar, which is actually the same notebook bar that you have, uh, have uh, in, the, in the desktop application. But the information about that is rooted uh, via JavaScript um, from, the, from the core. And the actions are uh, like uh, updated according to the uh, to the UI test uh, uh, UI test commands that are sent back and, and consumed by the core. So now we are getting to the future. Uh, so for the future, we would like to use uh, this uh, the JS dialogs uh, for for everything. So instead of the of the pixels uh, that we have to use for the dialogs now, um, use uh, nice JavaScript rendering uh, for that. Uh, the sidebar in the desktop case should use this as well, but of course, like we uh, cannot do it as uh, this control by one finger, uh, but something like more uh, more advanced that looks more like the sidebar in the desktop case. We would like to reuse uh, the usage of Leaflet JS uh, and uh, like uh, use uh, Canvas for all the rendering instead. Uh, so now Writer Calc Impress uh, do that now, but uh, they still uh, need bug fixing in Master. Um, uh, because uh, because like uh, the zooming is not uh, not working there well and, and stuff like that. We would like to reduce the use of Poco uh, just because like it makes things harder to compile and uh, uh, and uh, like uh, the STD library is increasingly getting the features that that uh, we are using from the Poco. Uh, so the hope is that we will be able to uh, to kill it at some stage as well. And of course, lots of paper cards fixing. Um, so for the mobile apps, we get a lot of uh, great feedback from the Google Play reviews um, uh, that helps uh, focusing on the things that uh, that the uh, that the people are actually using. And that's it from me. So big thank you, uh, everybody, to who has contributed, and uh, everybody who has uh, who has co-funded the work uh, that we are doing here. So thank you so much. I'm trying to switch off the sharing. So, any questions, please? Yeah, Candy, this is Gabriel from One and One. Yeah, hello. Um, so, I just wanted to ask that the direction is to uh, remove the native dialogues that are rendered on server and to replace them with the JavaScript dialogues. Uh, well, that's the hope. Like it's uh, it's still a far future, uh, but we would like to that. But uh, the dialogues, uh, like technically, still live on the server. Uh, so basically, like you would be still running the the dialogue uh, on the server, like remotely. But uh, like you are not seeing the pixels rendered from that, but instead, yeah, yes. like the the yeah, the yeah yes, and, and I understood the concept. And mm -hmm. understood awesome. the concept. Yeah. Um, Okay. Uh, yeah, but why? Uh, I mean, uh, it's not uh, more easy to just render the dialogues from a server as image and send to so client. It has, it has various problems. Uh, so the traversal of the cursor is not uh, like very uh, like you still have to go with every round trip uh, to the server and back. Like for example, like you click a button. Uh, for example, uh, sorry, you switch. Uh, uh, you switch a checkbox or a radio button and everything, and uh, uh, 
like uh, it has to go to the server and back. You cannot do any like nice animations and stuff like that. Um, with when you have that as JavaScript dialog, uh, like you can style it with JavaScript just beautifully as you wish, and it is still the same dialog, and you still have the same functionality. So that is uh, that is basically the motivation. Yeah, uh, yeah, yes, but, yourself, uh, Like it is not a total priority, but I just this my yeah, personal. Yeah, yeah but this uh, this doesn't mean uh, um, some. Uh, uh, overhead on the client side for, uh, for duplicating, let's say, the dialogues or uh, the, the user interface. Like you mean from the programming point of view or from the performance yeah, point yeah, of yeah, view? Yeah, yeah, from developing. From, from developing. developing. Uh, no, because, uh, because like we are uh, taking the dialogues uh, that are in LibreOffice and actually like traverse the content in VCL and create the JSON from that. So it is uh, it is just you know scanning the the dialog, the, the like at this it inside uh, the structure of the widgets that are there, uh, dumps it into JSON and then sends it uh, sends it to the online. Yes, yes, that I understood. But uh, still, the user interface, the graphical appearance of the dialogs, yeah, should be made on the client side, right? Yes, but like uh, the, that is that is like very trivial. So, so like the the it's just HTML and JavaScript. So so uh, so like the the browsers are uh, are just optimized to, to render yeah, it yeah. nicely. And, uh, and the yeah and the functionality is on server. Yeah, I understood. Yes. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. Okay, I am afraid I need to finish so that the next presenter can go ahead. So Shimon.